Dave here. How are you? Today is the, uh, what is it? It's the 19th for us here in Australia, 19th of July. I trust your week's been good. Uh, mine has been good. I've been busy working on different things in the workshop and having fun. And that's what it's all about, enjoying myself. And I'm hoping that you are enjoying yourself in your workspace, whether it's a large shop, big than mine, or nice little space in the corner of a study or wherever. It doesn't matter, really, does it? All right. Let's see, on the show today, I hope it's coming through nice and clear. I'm going to turn that one on, and I'm hoping the sound actually worked. There we go. Um, good, just watching down here. Da, 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 da. Got my thumbs up, ready. Okay. Hi, Dave and everybody. G'day, Stephen Rogerson. And everyone else. Loud and clear. Excellent. Thanks, Fred. All right. Today on the show, the lathe cut. We're going to continue on with this build, which is... Um, I'm really keen to get it finished because I don't want the thing sitting in the middle of the workshop here. This is it here. And uh, so I want to be able to move it off to the side, put the lathe on it, put the Sorby Pro Edge on and start using it. All right, Th that's that. So we're going to sand the top with a Rotex. And if anyone doesn't know what a Rotex is, it's this bad boy here. This is a machine that's a standard um, random orbital sander. Or if I click this button on the top, it goes into a geared mode. Hear that? So it has this, if I was to put a pencil against the face of that piece of paper, I might even do it as a demo, it will give me kind of like a spirographic image. It's very regular, but aggressive. And it's going to be good because on the back of this particular top, I need to just clean it up a little bit before I start sanding it smooth. On the back of this one, I'm only going to take it to 120 grit. On the top, I've taken it to 4,000. Some people have been saying, Dave, it's obvious you don't know what you're doing because if you take the 4,000 grit, you're going to close all the pores. Correct in the majority of situations, but for Liberon finishing oil, they say to take it to 1,500 minimum. I've done my unit over the back there, the uh, CNC cabinet that I built, 4,000, built it over a year ago. The finish is beautiful on it. I want the finish really, really glossy on this because every now and then on the lathe, I will use... Uh, polishes or the micro mesh with water and I don't want it getting into the timber at all. So the Libra and finishing oil is what I'm going to use. And we'll do the first coat, bottom and top, and you'll see the difference between a 120 finish and a 4000 finish as to how it looks. You'll get a super gloss with the 4000, almost impossible with the 120. Uh, okay, we're going to try and cut the draw fronts for this unit as well. And I'll just grab the parallel guides and also my TS55, the cordless one, and zap off a few fronts. I won't fit them today. We'll probably do that next week. Uh, Avid CNC interview. I will be releasing that during the week, possibly Wednesday. Uh, it's a 35-minute interview. I asked Avid 11 questions. And I'll see down the side here. There you go. That's how I've labeled it for you guys. And when... Uh, when you see the, the video, what happens is I did a Zoom meeting with these guys, like Sammy and Corey from Avid, and I'm up in one side of the screen, Sammy's in one side, Corey's down the bottom. They are both from different areas within Avid CNC, and they will address, well, they'll, they'll answer the questions I give to them, um, you know, whoever is best suited to do it. Worthwhile watching it. It was, it was fun to do. The, the guys had a, uh, Sammy and uh, Corey had a great time, and... Uh, it's, there was questions there that you guys had asked me to ask them. So jump in and watch that when I, when I put it out. Viewers projects. We've got two viewers projects this week. And uh, they're both really, really nice. All right. And thank you again to all the people who become patrons. So the viewers projects, one is from Alan Fisi and the other one is Paul Mumford. So it's F-I-C-I. Fichi, Fichi. I, you tell me how, it, how to pronounce it. I don't know. <laughs> um, it sounded a little bit uh, terrible the way I first said it, didn't it? Anyway, first thing to do, first thing to do, I'm going to sand this. So I'll move a couple of things. Oh, right, give me a second. Give me a second. What I'm going to do is quickly push out some posts to Instagram and also uh, Facebook as well, I think. Instagram, uh, close that, do this one. This one and this one and say share that one's doing it how easy is that and now i'm going to 
throw it out to everyone else. Uh, morning, everyone else down through the sound, through the side there. I read sound when I said sound. Okay, so there you go. Give me a second. I will jump on here and send out all of these. This one, post. This one, post. This one, post. This one, post. The, all these is doing is sending out to different groups to say we're live right now. I tried doing this whilst the uh, the, uh, the the intro was happening, and what happened there was I got caught. <laughs> there was nothing happening on the show because I was madly doing this in the background. That's the last one, and we will close all of that. Come back to me. There you go, Sean. How are you? Morning, Paul, as well. Oh, quick drink. So. I'm hoping that you've got some interest in this. I'll bring this up here so you can see what kind of a finish 4000 gives me. Now, that's the back that I'm yet to do a little bit of work on. And then you see this, it's like it's got a finish on it already. That's 4000. It looks like it is so super smooth to touch. All right. So I don't want to put that face down on my bench because I'm going to sand in the back. Ordinarily, I would have done it the other way around. I would have worked on the back first and then tipped it up the other way. So what I'm going to do to save myself is I'm going to use a little bit of the packing material that I use for the Stanton bench. So if you order a bench from me in Australia or New Zealand, this will be what it's packed in at the moment. So there's a couple gone out this week. And thank you, everyone who's either buying the plans or purchasing the bench directly from me. All right. I'm going to put her upside down on top of that. As I say, there's no reflection on that side. See it? Okay. Lovely. That's the first part done. Next thing is get the Rotex. And over the back here, there's a little space couple of little spots. You know what, I might turn it around so you can see it better when I do that spot. It's just a, a little bit, because these boards, when you buy them, they're not, they're not totally level all the way through. This is all end grain finger jointed. And then once it's all been done like that, they throw it through this big drum sander and it can be uneven. So I tend to, when I'm joining it, I cut the sides off, I might, might take a whole lamination off so that I'm not right on the edge because drum sanders tend to, those big ones tend to roll over on the edge where there's less resistance. So just here, I need to sand that and we might go to Carl Cam for this as well. I'm going to jump in with, what size, what grit paper will I use? I've got a bit of 60 here, 60 granite and it works so well. This is, it's only going to take a second. Line it up. There we go. Now, this thing here is a front handle. And it's actually called a side handle if you want to get one. So it slides onto the front like that. And instead of having the handle in the side here, which tends to make you roll the machine over, you have equal bearing front and behind. This part gets hot with a Rotex if you're not familiar with the machine, they get hot. Um, we'll do the sand. I'll hook up the dust extractor to it. And I really do need to empty, <laughs> empty the container of that. That's just from this week. Have a look at that. That is chockers. It'll work just for this little part of the job. It'll be fine. Uh, pretty amazing. I'm going to grab a muffs. Now, if there's things during the show that you want, have a look in the description box down the bottom. I normally put links in. So, if you, people in Australia you want one of these, 
There's a link there to Carvatec. Here we go. You might want to turn the sound down just a little and we'll flick up to the Carl Cam so you can see what's happening. Where are we? There we go. This is the part that I'm going to work on. Actually, hold on. Maybe even if I go to that side camera, it might be better. Camera three. Yeah, that's going to be better for you. So it's just here that I'm going to be working on. I'll move this back a little bit. All right, sound down. Here we go. Done. <laughs> and the other end. Okay, see that? That's that's where the glue join was that I did, where I joined that onto the rest of the board. A little bit more here. I'll switch cameras again to Carl Cam and Chat. And just got a little bit here to do. Move my coffee out of the way. It is super quick. Go back to the main one. All right. So that's, I've done 60 where I need to. Next thing, take that off and I'll go to 80 grit. Eventually, all of these, all of these boxes are going to live in that unit over the back there. So I don't have to find a place to put the box down. It'll be in there. You saw how I got the earmuffs or the eye muffs out of that uh, safety box. Took a couple of seconds. Okay, 80 grit. I'm going to go over the whole thing quickly. Doesn't take long. Again, the sound. Amazing, isn't it? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to random orbit, which means it's not in the geared mode anymore. So it's not going to be as aggressive. So I'm going to do one more pass of the 80, then we'll throw the 120, and then we'll do the oil.
Okay, 120. Now I've got different papers here. The, uh, this is Ruben 2. If you're going to get Festool paper, just go Granat. It's, it lasts a whole lot longer in my experience. This is old stuff that I had, so I'm using this up before I buy other stuff. All right, 120. If I was using, if I was using a conventional flooring wax like like Whittle wax or Osmo oil, I'd stop at 120. Maybe I could go 180 if I wanted to, but those products are designed to go in, so all of the fibre it'll suck it all the way in. With the Liberon, it's a different situation. It's not, it it will penetrate. It's, <laughs> it takes a long long time to dry, and it works it works very well. All right. I did say I was going to show you in geared mode. Oh, it doesn't get old. Also, you'll notice I'm using the blue pad on the Rotex. So that blue pad means it's very thin. So for dead flat surfaces or doing the edges, that you always use the blue pad. There are other pads that are soft or super soft. And you can have interface pads as well. So if I'm doing curved work, uh, well, then I'd switch to those other style of pads. What do we got there? Um, I'll use, there's an old piece of 320. West Side Will, how are you? All right, pencil. Do I have a pencil out? I'll check if I've got a pencil down here anywhere. Uh, you know, this always happens, doesn't it? I think I've got one over here. I always think, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. I'm getting it. The show's fully prepared. But then, no. There we go, found one. All right. So I'm going to just turn it on Rotex mode. Any, considering we're against the melamine. Yes. It's still going to absorb moisture, Wayne, even if it's against the melamine. I like to seal the whole thing so it becomes a stable unit. Also, when it gets wet, it may have water or moisture roll over the edge and underneath and get caught between the melamine and, and this board. And that wouldn't be good for it. The melamine is all HMR, high moisture resistant melamine. That's the only type that I buy. Um, so it's designed for kitchens and bathrooms. All right, here we go. This is just ordinary. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. Ordinary mode. Not really doing much. You can see it's got a five millimeter orbit. Okay. Now, when I go to Rotex mode, geared, push that down there and rotate it. There we go. It's going to be a whole different thing. You watch. No trip to stop. See that? It's spun all the way around the outside. And if you have a look at it right in the center, you can see you've got this, the pattern is, is circulating. On the outside, it's turning a whole lot faster, obviously, than the center. So you can see the pattern a little bit more on the inside. There you go. That's, that's how it really works well. And the dust extraction. Can you see any dust? I can't smell any dust, and normally I can smell it straight away if there's dust in the, air, in the air. I do have the room air filter running as well. If I was using this all day, yeah, I'd put the stealth on. The, um, my, that's my 
little mask that I use, or I would throw the air shield on. Normally I just keep the air shield now for, for the lathe and things that are super messy or for the angle grinder when I'm outside. Anyway, um, so that's that. How about, oh, we need to do a little bit of sanding. Um, I've got a bit of 320 grit here, this will do me. At the front here. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'll tip it around so you can see. And the back is perfectly clean and kept, kept good, if that's such a word. Just knock the receiver over. Um, okay. Uh, tip our wound against warping, yeah. Um, as an ex-guard, there are just some things that make you... I would say that watching concrete and paint dry is right up there. Okay, so you're thinking possibly sanding and all this kind of stuff puts you to sleep? Well, maybe it does, but it's worthwhile knowing how to do it or, or actually um, watching other people have a win or make a mistake. It's all about sharing the information. I'm going to switch over to this camera here so that we can see a little bit close up of what's happening. All right, can you see the burn marks around the corner there from the router? So when I was using the quarter inch round over, if you go a little bit slow, sometimes you'll get a bit of a burn and I've got it down this end as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use 320 grit paper, tear it down the middle and then I'm going to be khaki handed. I'm going to bring the camera around to the other side so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Okay, so I use my finger on the inside. I keep the paper long. This is cloth paper so that I can pull it backwards and forwards. And you watch how we go. I'm going to clamp it in position. Give me a sec. Because then I can push a bit of force onto it. All right, that's better. And now, while on the flat, I can do this. Again, and around the other corner. And down this side. That's beautiful. Now, around that one, I'm going to do the other one up here as well. Again, sorry if this is going to uh, put you to sleep. I'm getting more dust from this than I was with the Rotex. Just that little bit there. Cool. Done. And I'm going to... A little bit on the bottom there. And I'm also going to give it a quick touch on the edges, these, these parts here, because I cut this with the track saw and it could be a little bit of a problem. I'm just going to use a block of wood and maybe the, uh, that 120 paper just around the block. If you haven't got any paper, just grab. Beautiful. And the underside. Great. 
other end. And underneath. And across the back. Beautiful. All right, next thing to do, we don't want to have any um, dust on here. We'll switch to the other camera again. So if we don't want dust, we need to clean it off. So I've got this guy here and the dust extractor. That Bluetooth is really handy. All right, now we can put some oil on it. I'll get the finishing oil. Where is it? Just here. And I think I've got some rags here. So I use microfiber to put it on. And I don't need all of that. Let's see if I've got the scissors here. I have shown you before. What I do is I'll cut it. And then I give it a, a quick hit like that to get rid of all the little bits that come off. I'm also going to rub it over the surface as a tack cloth. This one. So it picks up any of the last little bits of dust that might be there because they will show up. They will show up in your finish. Done. See that? See how it's got the colour in it? It did pick up some more. Okay, there's some conversation there. Finishing is the last thing you do to a project. However, it's the first thing everybody sees, so it should be done well. Exactly right. Or right, everyone use on their assembly tables. There's good questions. So I give this a quick shake. This is what I'm using. And I'll read on the back. Ah, oh, where are we? Okay, ensure the surface is bare, remove any wax finishes with Libron, da 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 finishes. Uh, clean, dry, and ensure the surface is dust free. That's what I've just done. If required, stain the wood with uh, such and such prior. Uh, oil using a brush or lint free cloth. Allow the oil to penetrate for 10 minutes, then wipe off all excess. Cool, okay. Now, also, this is um, exothermic. I think that's what they call it, uh, which means it will self-combust. See down the bottom, it's got a warning just here. So don't leave rags after you've used this stuff sitting on your bench. Stick them outside in the uh, sunshine to, for it to evaporate. Or I've got an uh, old saucepan over there with a lid with water in it. I throw them into there. All right. Do you want to watch from up above? Now, this will be nice, but it's not going to be as nice as the final coat. All right. To do this, I'm going to take it off my section of blue stuff underneath. Because, I'll just throw that down over there. I don't, this will be fine, I'm not using the Rotex anymore. 
you know, swirling around and, and annoying it. This is fun. I love this part. All right, this is the rough side, remember, 120 grit. So I'll switch the cameras up to Carl Cam. All good. And don't try and just get some on the rag and wipe it. Pour it out. Pour it out. Okay. Here we go. That should be enough. For the moment, anyway. All right, here we go. This is the fun part. Now this will be getting a few coats, but for the moment, I may even need more. See how it's, it's kind of disappearing as soon as it's going on. The first coat with anything always soaks in quickly. Now some people may have thought, oh Dave, you put too much on. And some people may also think, Dave, why aren't you wearing gloves? I just started wondering that myself. <laughs> I'm going to need more. Even if it's the only the, only the first coat, you try and get it on as even as possible. And it's just soaking it up. All right, now I'm not going to do the edges quite yet because I don't want it running down. Oh, thanks, Matt. Have a whiskey. I don't want it running down and uh, going on to the other surface quite yet because I'm not ready to work on that surface yet. Okay, so you can see what that looks like. It's getting there. Now I'm going to get some pyramids. I should really use John's dogs and put them in the, uh, in the dog holes, but at the moment I'll just grab some of these painter's pyramids. <sighs> and flip her up the right way. We'll take that off, and it's, it's dry to touch. It really doesn't take long, it soaks in so quickly. The other side is not going to soak in as quickly, and you watch how it looks. But it does get in, so I'm going to put these guys around to support it. And put it on this side. Ah, there we go. Stephen, thank you. All right, this side, here we go. This is, this is going to be beautiful. Now, when you're pouring, don't pour that side down because it's going to run all over here. Pour from here because what's happening is inside the can, it's still there. Hold on. <laughs> it's still here. It, it's not going to make it. It's not going to go be messy. So I'm going to pour some on. And we're going to spread it out. Oh, I see it runs so much better on this side as well. And it won't use as much. But it does get in, even though we've taken it down to 4,000 grit. And I did pour out more that time as well. Oh, this is going to be so nice. This is the side everyone sees. The other side, we're just sealing it.
I could watch finishes go on timber surfaces all day. Now, now I'm going to look at the, finish, the gloss. Now I'm going to do the ends, the end grain. Now see, you may not see it, but along the edge here, we're getting a build-up from when I was applying it. And that's why I didn't do the other side, the edges, when I had it up the other way first. I wanted this side facing up so I could do this. And clean, clean that last little bead off. Move the router. Beautiful. And spread it around a bit more. It's starting to, it's starting to uh, soak in up the end here. I'll just keep on rubbing it in. If you want a matte or a satin finish, don't take it to 4,000. Go maybe to 800 or even 500. If you, want, if you want a less gloss finish, I want a high gloss if I can get it. And for a first coat, that's not looking too bad. Now what I do is I just work from one end to the other. Just pulling it through. The laminations really help because I follow the lines. Now I need you to tell me where I did the join. Because remember I joined, this is two boards. I, one main section and I put another piece on from another board. You may be able to cheat and know exactly where it is by the, um, the lamination size. There's the join there. That's the join that we did last week. Isn't that amazing? All right, now, that, my friends, is ready to sit there for a while. And as I say, with this, oh, I'll turn the other camera on so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Finding hard to find a spot here to turn the other camera. Camera three I'll do. Look at that. Look at that. What, how nice is that? I'm going to put three coats on. Not today the three coats on. So have a look here. This is the tin that I use. So you can see in there from other days, I open the rag up, and I throw it in the water. Safe workshop. Always safe. Give my hands a quick wash. We're all used to this now, aren't we? Done. And dry, of course. All right. Other camera. There we go. This is so nice. Now, I can leave that sit there for about 10 minutes, maybe, maybe a little bit less. And... Whilst it's sitting there, I might move it around the corner a little bit so I've got some bench here to work on. Mm. Spin it around. How good is this bench? <laughs> okay, so that's out of the way there. And I can still use the work surface here at the top of my assembly table. All right, let me have a quick look. Uh, considering what I'm using to build the tip, okay, I love the way the grain jumps out. It sure does. In finishes for shop furniture, I have a pine workbench near completion, so I'm listening to the boiled linseed terps and does the poly go over the top. This is basically, most of this is uh, linseed oil uh, with their uh, secret spices, I guess, <laughs> like KFC. Um, oh, I didn't get the back down. I'll do that on the next run. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, it sure does. I love it. I love it. It looks fantastic. Uh, beautiful finish for the first coat. You're not wrong. Would you put a similar finish on the Stanton bench or an MFT top? You can if you want to. Totally up to you. Totally up to you. Uh, use Osmo. Yes. Um, 
nearly always pruny now, okay, da, 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 equal portions. Some time ago, a bloke told me after several applications where, when the oil pools rub over with a fine wet and dry. Well, what I'm going to do next, Wayne, is before I put the, pardon me, the next coat on, I'll use 4-0 steel wool over the whole thing, running along the grain if I can. And uh, it, it's magic. And then, and then the next coat, and it just keeps on popping. Yep, so this will probably get around three coats. Let's say it's the same as the one over the back there behind, the, behind that. I don't know if you can see it or not. Probably not. All right, let's have a look at what else is happening in the show. We might look at, it's 22, we may not even get to cut the draw fronts. I hope we can. Um, where are we? Let's have a look in down here. Oh, as I said, uh, people that sponsored us for the stimulus thing, you know, we're trying to get local restaurants back in the game in New South Wales anyway, the companies that are in safe areas. Um, I'm going out and uh, taking Vicky. This week, I didn't take Vicky, I took my granddaughter, Laura, and we went to Starbucks. And you might think, well, Starbucks has always got people there. Well, you know, they've got the same situation as us. There was a huge pile of all of the tables and stools were all up one end of the, the Starbucks, Starbucks restaurant, all with tape around it, and there was possibly six tables left. So we went there, and there was a few people there. Granted, there was a few people there. There was a few people in the drive through But uh, let me see if I've got this, here we go, here's Laura and myself, and Matt, Stephanie, Wayne and Stephen were the people that had put into the super chat to help us out to go down. You can see the place is just about empty. A couple of people over in the back behind Laura's shoulder there at that particular time. And there might have been about another three couples or maybe six people more in the whole restaurant. So it's, uh, it's something that we're trying to do, as I say, if you guys, if you want to help me to help these local businesses, by all means, throw some stuff in the super chat, if you want. Totally up to you. Right, now, we're going to have a look at a viewer's project, and this is Paul. So Paul Mumford has sent some stuff in, and he says, Hi, Dave, thank you for all you do for the group. I know personally you provide much inspiration and motivation. Well, thank you for that, Paul. Here we go. I'm going to throw the first photo up. Now, Please find these uh, images of progress of my current project, a table for my CNC, following as a description of the progress so far. Uh, the timber for my table is hardwood obtained from a demolition of the house across from where I live. I think it's tallow wood. As it was rough sawn, I ran it through my thickness so to clean it up. The entire frame is joined using hard or hand cut mortise and tenon joints, 30 in all, including the suspended drawer frame, the four top corners of the top frame having Haunched tenons, which are also mitered on the ends where they meet with a leg. See, pick one ready for the glue up and pick two for the frame assembled. Now, if you've got projects like this, I encourage you to send them in. Uh, okay, the suspended drawer frame joints had the draw bore method applied uh, for added support. Now, let's go to picture three because Paul shows us here. As the frame is suspended, suspended and must carry the weight of the drawer and its contents. The drawer itself is made from 16 by 240 millimeter pine and 12 millimeter hardwood ply obtained from a very popular hardware store. This is my first a ser a serious attempt at hand cut dovetail joints and I'm very pleased with the result. See so pick five and uh, there it is, five and five A. I fitted soft closed drawer slides as recommended by you and couldn't be happier. So let's go to that picture. So there's the soft closed drawer slides and uh, pay number six and six A. There it is closed in the frame. The next step will be to add a drawer front, a bottom shelf and a top made from ply left over from the fit out of my workshop. Although it is a very heavy piece, I think it will be a very stable base for the a meter by meter CNC. I hope you like it. Well, I'll tell you what, Paul, I like it a lot. What do you guys think? I think that's amazing. I love people doing hand cut. Um, hand cut mortises and hand cut dovetails is just, that kind of stuff is beyond me at the moment. I, I am uh, in awe of people that can do that stuff. 
What's the next thing? Let's have a look at the program here. So we're working on the lathe cut. We've done the top with the Rotex and the finishing oil. We haven't cut the draw fronts. Let's have a look while we wait for this just to settle down a little bit more before I move it and do the draw fronts. Of course, I think we'll get it done. We'll have a look at Alan Ficci, F-I-C-I. I think it's Ficci. All right, so now, Alan, 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 where are you? Down here. Alan. Hi, Dave. I'm sending you this email with photos and details of how I modified your bench for my use. I'll just copy my post. Uh, da, da, da. Here it is. I'm a professional woodworker from the northern resort area region of Michigan. I work in a five-person highly... Uh, custom shop with a pretty broad range of fabrication capabilities. I personally have run five different custom shops over a 40 year span. Um, four person to uh, up to 100 plus people in the shops. Don't consider myself an old dog and love adopting new tech if I can make, if it can make me and our staff more efficient and productive. I made an Excel version of your bench. Let's go to the next one. Um, from 19 millimeter marine birch ply off, off, which is off a job and 19 millimeter maple ply skirt. Use Makita track system and have a Makita plunge saw and multiple tools, routers and saws that will run off this track. I bought the path guide system as I only as as I get plenty of use of it making tops or jigs for machining and assembly. I own two 59 inch tracks and a 39 inch track with TSO guide rail connectors, squares and their parallel guide system. I size the bench top 32 inches, 8 hole by 55 inch, 14 hole, and size the apron at 14 inch tall, 4 hole by 55 inches long, 14 holes. I located the apron track a bit lower than yours, stacked just above the lower apron cushion strip, which is still in the leg space. For legs, I use the Rockler bench system, or bench cookies and tall legs threaded inserts and a counter bores under the top using the leg, tall leg flange to push against the leg apron stretcher while it's pulling on the insert into the top. It's very much the same way that uh, mine does, except for mine being 18 mil, we use John's uh, legs from Yellow Box Shed. Just throwing in a side note there. I made a pair of Deadman. Now let's see if we've got, oh no, he's just showing it how it puts together there. Let's go to the next photo. There they are. There's a pair of Deadman right and left and added them to the apron with four dominoes, pull it tight with quarter by 20 by three and a half bolt into the embedded T-nut in the apron. I'm using mostly UJK dogs, super dogs, and their cam clamps, as well as a variety of ratcheting clamps. I've had the bench in our shop the past two weeks and used it to assist me in building a seven foot by nine foot L-shaped black cherry desk for one of our clients. I've included pictures. Let's see if we've got it. I oh, know we got another picture from the other side there first. Let's have a look. This is the unit that he's been building with the Stanton bench. So there you go, it's not a toy. It works really, really well. I want to compliment you on your genius design. <laughs> I didn't read that bit. Design of this bench. The more you use it, the more you find you can do with it. I also love that you can slide uh, to and or material under the bench for quick access when working. I want to make a couple of guide rail supports and you have shown in your videos to hold the track and vacuum hose. Uh, would you have some specs that you could share with me for those supports? I might be able to do that for you, Alan. Um, if photos of the bench broken down, Got any questions? Um, give me a shout. Thanks again for all you do and share. We'll have another look at the photo of the other part of the, this unit that he built for a customer. I love it. That's really cool. All right, there you go. Got some stuff, send it in to me. It can be small stuff like poles for his meter by meter CNC or big stuff like uh, Alan's building there. And now we're going to move this down over there and then we're going to run something over the jointer. So talk amongst yourselves while I move this. Oh, the bottom is just hand dry. Go around. Around, and I better put the lid back on the oil. Oh, that's going to be magic. Very, very nice. Oil and lid. So what do you think of Alan's work and Paul's work? I think they're fantastic. Oh, here's something. I'm, I, get, I get a little bit peckish during the show, so you know what I'm like. He's gonna say, I, I love both of these products. These are both Australian products that I think are yummy. 
and I eat them together. So here we go. There's a Tim Tam and some of this axle grease called Vegemite. There we go. Bit on the knife there. And we're going to butter it on. Oh. There's probably people about to throw up. And they're thinking, no, he's not going to eat it. You watch this. Mmm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I could eat that all day. Mmm. Love it. All right. Next thing. Move the Rotex out of the way. Over here. Unsubscribe day, Matt. <clears throat> ah, well, that's your call. <laughs> Give it a go. Give it a go. You might be surprised. This one back here and spin this back around this way. Still got a few minutes. Ten minutes to go. All right. What are we going to do? I'm going to move one camera down over here because I want to run something through the jointer or over the jointer. It's not through it. Move this down here. That looks all right there. Open the dust extraction port. Turn the dust extractor on. And mouse. Don't tell me I've lost the rotten thing again. Is it under there? Yes, there it is. <laughs> All right, we'll go to camera three. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, it's beautiful. It really is. Okay, so I've got the jointer down there. I'll throw the eye muffs on. And I'm going to run one of these panels over the top. And the reason I'm going to do this is because these boards are never straight on the edges. Just adjust my dust extraction. Cool. So I'm going to do the draw fronts out of this material here so it all matches. It's all the same. Going to get the big piece out of the bottom and the smaller pieces up the top. I've got the jointer set to around about half a millimetre in a pass. We'll turn her on. Now also, with a board, you might be able to see it down here. I've got a hump there. So the board is this way. That's the only way you put timber over a jointer unless you do passes progressive from the center and work out. I'm working from one side to the other, so I'm gonna do it this way. And this, this is the part that I'll favor. I'm not gonna push against the board here. I'm gonna push against down here. I've got a hold of it. I'm holding it against the fence, and the thing is just to do an even progression. Try and keep the fingers away from the blade. That's the first. One more pass, and we should be good. Okay, so I've got a really nice edge down there that's super straight and square. Beautiful. Ready for the parallel guides. Backed up here. Now I could run it over the table saw or I could use the track saw. I'm using the track saw and the parallel guides because these are an option for people that have got a smaller space or you know you're traveling around and you're working on site. A lot of people can't take a table saw to site. So this is, this is why I'm doing this. I'll move those out of the way. And we'll move that camera again down to here. 
I move this guy out of the way. Nice color. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted to have another one of those. That's just, that was just so yummy. All right, move this big fellow up. Now this will be my new big docking station for sheet goods. And I've spent a bit of time, you probably saw me using the, my plane that I built to level all the tops, which I have done. And also, I've gone over it with the Rotex as well, just to tidy it up. So I'm gonna bring down here to do some cutting. This will be the first job I've cut on it. The other camera. We've got five minutes left. We'll get a couple of the, the fronts cut, or if not, just the top one. I'll show you how I do that. Beautiful. About there. Move that back to there. I'm getting a little bit crowded. And the door. Now you might wonder what, what I'm doing with the door. Well, I'm not going to cut into the surface of this top because it's a beautiful top. I'm going to put the door on top as the sacrificial surface. And I will be getting a large piece of foam to go on here as well that I'll be able to store on and off it. So this is an old hollow core door and you can see that it's had plenty of use as a sacrificial top there. That's going to make people relax a little bit. We'll turn the other guy on. Camera three. One little thing I should have done. They're the guides that I'm, I'm using the 30 inch guides. And I need that one off there. That's the one thing that I didn't prepare is taking those off. That's all right. We, we might run, <laughs> can't crash, bang, smash. We might run over just a touch. I'll use the long rail. I wasn't going to use the long track, but I will. I need to loosen those two guide rail adapters off. Grab an Allen key. Oh, actually, I wonder if I've got one of them here. I might have it here. Yes, I do. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so this little guy I will use on here. I think you can see that all right. Loosen that. Slide along to about there, I think. Down there. And down there. Get the board that we're working on. Pop the board there. Put the board on it, or put it on the board, I should say. We've got to move this one. It should be okay. I never used to use parallel guides before, but now I use them a lot because they're just so easy and convenient. About there. And this is a this is the right hand. So we put that around like so. Once you set them up, off you go. Locked on. And the left hand, the good thing about these is they don't fall off. Like there's others out there that run down the side of the board and 
it's a pain because they tip and make the, the track do this kind of thing. So that's why I like these ones. All right, I need to measure the height that I want to cut. And I'll find a tape when I find it, I find it, I find it. This will do. The height of this one is going to be 200 and 90. Yeah, 290 for this one, which I've just measured off the, the unit there. So, this one here, I'll spin that around so you can see. These things, you've got to get them perfectly in line with the base, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, other way around, of course, that's the wrong side, it's this one. There's a left and a right. That's better. 290, so we're at 290 is right there, and 290 on this side, just checking I'm right, yep, beautiful. Push the bumpers down, like so. There you go. I, I calibrated the thing earlier. And the calibration is just a matter of loosening that off. And so you can slide this bumper, or stop, whatever you want to call it, to the right position. And then all I do is I, I put the guides beside each other. Like I'll have another one finish there. A square, I'll put, set a square up on the board. Line one up beside the square, the other one beside that. Drop the bumper. Drop the bumper on the other one down to the same position. If I'm on 300 there, I'd go 300 on this one as well. And then nip up that Allen key. I'll do a video on how to do it properly, but it just, it's just so quick and easy. There we go. That's 300 millimeters. I get the saw. Sorry, it's uh, 290. And this is 18 mil thick, so I'm going to go through at possibly 21. Put the hose on. This is a cordless saw, so to marry up the Bluetooth, I turn it on down here until the little blue circle starts spinning. I do the same with the battery here until the blue light comes on. Turn it on. Hear that? Dust extraction. Push this guy down. Drop it on the track. Back to where it's got to start. I've got, oh, I've got the crosscut blade in. I should really have the rip blade in, but it's going to be okay. Now that burnt a fair bit as it was tracking through. On one cut, one pass over the jointer and that'll all disappear. So a little bit of burning there. But it's a very smooth cut. So that's my piece. So that's going to be the piece for the bottom drawer. And we'll cut it in half, obviously. And we'll go through that last process next week. Bring this back around here so you can see where it's going to go. Down there like so. All right. So this will be going there. It'll be the draw fronts for those bottom two drawers. And I'll do a cut down the middle. And this, you can see the drawer above it is going to pass past it as well. 
So that'll be next week. Or I'll do it during the week. One or the other. How's the time? Five past. All right. There we go. I haven't had a chance to read anything down the side. Um, can't, can't think I knew that I hope it came safe at work. Sounds like I was struggling with that blade. Yes, it was the cross-cut blade. Yep. Um, with the... Uh, <laughs> just reading at the same time. If I put the panther blade in it, it would have just gone... Whoosh. Again, I might save that to next week. I'm going to check the run sheet. I think we've got everything covered. Uh, don't forget the Avid CNC interview I'm doing with them. Uh, it, it, it came out really well. I was really happy with it. The, all of the questions were answered. Uh, there was no trying to get out of any of the questions at all. Uh, we worked on the lathe cart, sanded the top with the Rotex and put the Libron oil on. I'm looking over here at the moment. It's just looking beautiful. Um, you like the show? Thanks. And also for my patrons, we'll be doing uh, the after show chat as well. It runs for about half an hour. So if you're interested in doing that kind of stuff, just uh, become one of my patrons. As I say, in the description box down the bottom, there's links there to get to that. And there'll be a link in Patreon for the after show chat and hangout. So we just have a bit of a chat, see what happened in the show, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> just get to know each other. All right. What's the next thing? Um, that's it. So next week, as I say, we'll probably hook in, do a little bit more on this. I may get a few of them put in, like do a few of the drawers and finish them, and just leave the last two to finish off at the top. I'll re do all the finishing, the rest of the finishing on that top, so it'll be ready to screw on. So hopefully next week, that will be job finished, and we'll put the lathe on it and the Sorby Pro Edge, and love it. Okay, nice show again. I feel better if anyone could make up their collective mind about reopening. Okay, buy all, keep safe. Uh, where's the end part here? This is this bit. Thanks again to all my patrons. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you all next week. Bye.